Now that we've talked about turbojet engines, today we'll consider more advanced configurations, including turbofan and turboprop engines. Now, when we talked about turbojets, you'll recall that the propulsive uh, and the overall efficiency was low uh, compared to the thermal efficiency for practical flight Mach numbers below, say, about 3. So a turbojet is a good engine choice for extremely high-speed aircraft. For example, things like the SR-71 Blackbird or the Concorde but not so good for subsonic and even slightly supersonic ones, so commercial airliners or most fighter aircraft. And the solution is to use alternative engine architectures that are designed to achieve high propulsive efficiency at lower flight speeds. The first of these that we'll talk about is the turbofan engine. The idea is to use some of the excess enthalpy at the turbine exit to drive another turbine which powers a fan. Which is just a low pressure ratio compressor. Which imparts a small specific thrust to a large mass flow of air. So, sketch out what one of these engines looks like, grab a new page, and basically we've got something like this. Got a fan at the front of the engine. This is connected via a shaft to a turbine near the back of the engine, and in between is basically a turbo fan a uh, turbojet engine so we have another shaft concentric to the first which contains a compressor Got that schematically here Let me draw that more realistically is having a decreasing area and of course the blades are located on the bottom here too but I'll only draw them on the top uh, then we have the combustor, burner, and then the turbine. We first have the nozzle guide vanes, and then the turbine rotor, 
and then another set of nozzle drive vanes going into the second turbine rotor. After the second turbine is another nozzle. And out here beside the, behind the fan is another set of blades that are essentially stators for the fan. So the fan has pr fan pressure ratio pi f and temperature ratio tau f. The compressor can be thought of as the actual compressor plus the fan acting on the part of the flow that goes into what we call the core, which is basically the turbojet engine buried inside this configuration. So, let's just, so this is the compressor. Of course, we've got the burner or combustor. This first turbine we call the high pressure turbine. For all these reasons, the pressure is higher there than here in the low pressure turbine. This is the core nozzle. This is the fan nozzle. This region around the core is what we call the bypass duct. And this blade row is the fan stator. Now if we imagine mass flow coming into this engine, We can divide it between the flow which goes into the core and the flow which goes through the bypass duct. So if we use M dot for the flow going through the core, we'll use alpha M dot, so a multiplicative factor alpha for the flow that goes through the bypass duct. And this Alpha is what we call the bypass ratio. So out here, we have station zero, so we have velocity C naught. Just before the fan, we have station two. After the fan, the station two prime. Then, after the compressor, is station three. After the turb, after the combustor or burner, is station four. After the high pressure turbine, but before the low pressure turbine, is station four prime. After the low pressure turbine, is station five. Station six is the nozzle exit, where we have velocity CE. Station 7 is behind the fan stator, and station 8 is at the fan nozzle exit. So the high pressure turbine, just to reiterate, is on a shaft with the main high pressure compressor. And the low pressure turbine is on another shaft that's connected to the fan. Now note again that the fan does some work on all the flow, including the part which enters the compressor. And just to cover some more terminology, the core is the compressor, the burner, and the two turbines. So the purpose of the core is to produce shaft power to drive the fan. And one question you might want to think about is why we use two shafts. Why not put the entire engine on one shaft? I'll tell you the answer 
but you can think more about why this is an important thing. Basically, this allows the fan to rotate more slowly than, the, than does the compressor. And because the fan is so much larger than the compressor, this is really important because the tip blade, the mock, the tip mock number of the blades is of course proportional to the radius. Since the radius of the fan is larger, we can't, we don't want to spin it as quickly because of inefficiencies. And I'll let you think about why that might be when the blade tip mock number is greater than one. So the power balance in a turbofan engine looks like this. The compressor is driven by the high pressure turbine. And the fan is driven by the low pressure turbine. So now let's make a few simplifying assumptions before we proceed with analysis of this configuration. So first, the fan provides the same pressure and temperature rise to all the flow passing through it both the core and bypass flow. Second, as with the turbo jet analysis, we're going to focus on an ideal case. All components are ideal. And third, mixing losses between the bypass duct and the core nozzle are negligible. And we're going to make some further simplifications a little later on that will ensure that this condition is indeed the case. So with these assumptions, we can analyze the bypass and the core streams and then relate them to one another via the outlet conditions for each stream.